Hey everybody, it's Steve at Thousand Year Home. Welcome to my channel. So this is my video journal of how I'm building a house off-grid. And you're standing right now with me inside of a shipping container home if this is your first visit. And it is just a personal journal, so I'm not trying to educate, I'm not trying to promote, I'm not making a living off of this. Uh, it's just my journal of what I do. And every day I try to do one big thing and one little thing on the house. Uh, this week I've been logging and I've got Somebody, uh, somehow or another, got tricked into going to Houston to help my daughter move. I don't know how. I feigned illness, heart attack, uh, nothing worked. But I did do this one smart thing. When I got there and I got to the refrigerator, I hired a guy in a parking lot randomly to take my place. Everybody looked at me with envy in their eyes. They didn't think of it for at first. But listen, there reaches an age in your life where you never have to tote a piece of furniture for another person again. I'm at that age. I'm at that age. So, but anyway, I was in Houston moving furniture. But I'm back and uh, this this door is actually, if you look at it, it's just screwed into a, a log. Now, I've been working on this door for about a week here off and on as time gives me, uh, you know, opportunity. So uh, on the outside, I've cut with a chainsaw, I've cut a recess for these doors to go in. Now I have to cut them down and get them in. And uh, it's, it's absolutely critical here in Texas. If you look closely, you'll see they're just propped in there and there's just little teeny tiny, barely noticeable gap. You don't notice it. I don't notice it, but every scorpion, every mosquito, every daddy long leg, every spider, every mouse, every copperhead, everything in Texas that's an animal sees that as Grand Central Station. And they just come tumbling down like it's, you know, the subway system into this beautiful environment. There's nothing to eat in here. There's nothing to do in here. And yet, yeah, all day long. So down there in the corner, you'll see I have a little glue trap. I've been replacing that thing daily with scorpions, mice, uh, daddy long leg, la da 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 ba ba ba. So let's get this thing done. Let's get these French doors in so I just can sleep at night with the rest knowledge that my co false cocoon of safety around me is, is real. And uh, it, if I feel a little tingle on my arm, it's not a daddy long leg walking on it. It's just me. Darren, dreaming about a tingle on my arm. All right, so there we go. So first things first, let's get these temporary down. Now I have to cut the tops of those and get them the right size to put in there. But let's do that. Oh, see the daddy long legs? See them? As soon as I move, you know, the ball off of the, uh, what was that show with... Uh, Drew Barrymore, where she was a zombie and she had this bally. That uh, anyway, that's what those guys are like. You can see them. Look, uh, if I do that, hey, that little ballies. Oh my gosh! No, bad. Uh, now I have to get, and that's the thing. They explode like landmines. Little. Oh, I see another one way over there. Like little daddy long leg landmines. Mm. I mean, ah! Okay, three. <laughs> Let's get this door in. <laughs> Let's get this door in. But in my defense, every, there's been a lot of other demands on me this week. So I've been faithfully working on this, but it's normally in the evening. It's now the weekend. And I got everything done outside. Let's go ahead and spend a moment getting all this done on the inside. So my house is a house. This, what you're looking at, is actually an ensuite bedroom. The whole uh, shipping container here on this side is an ensuite. So I'm uh, a 320 square foot uh, bedroom that's uh that's a good deal all right so i unscrewed everything there Check. let's get these doors stacked up as soon as i open that up bats will fly in here i don't know javelina and bobcats and everything else under the sun 
They'll all go, oh, hey, man. Thanks for the opening. Let's all come in. June bugs. That was my favorite. June bugs inside the house banging around. They are the clumsiest, dumbest, worstest creatures on earth. All right, any more spiders, though? Speeder arachnus. Okay. That is a pretty picture though, isn't it? That is a pretty picture. All right, so this is the outside here of the door. So I took them off, set them inside. As you can see, that is one post all the way across an eight foot plus post. And uh, I, if you go back through my videos and go, click hood on search, you can find anything. Uh, so anyway, I, I carved that out with a chainsaw, this notch, and then I went back in with a chisel and I chiseled it so that uh, the doors, hopefully, will just close right in there. And this is uh, what I'm using to synth synthetically make a door. So there, see it? So what I need to do next is I need to cut that door to fit minus a little bit around the edge. So I'm going to do a half inch. That way I'll have a quarter inch at the top, a quarter inch at the bottom, and I've got some weather strippings that I bought that are here somewhere. So let me go ahead and measure that out and uh, then rip that down, those doors down, make them fit, and uh, put one in this place, which will be yay, right? So I'm going to put you a little farther away so I don't knock you over. And uh, maybe put you on stop motion while I do this. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same. I don't really want to hurt you, but I can't control focus. the pain. If you so think you're by my side, maybe yeah, we can be okay. Okay, focus. okay, maybe you can you see? Yes, yes. All right, so I went ahead and got the doors rough cut. They do fit in the height. Perfect. Now, if you look over here in one corner, I had left, like... I cut it, undercut it by a, a three quarters of an inch on purpose so that as I, um, uh, I want to make sure there wasn't a big gap for the doors. But if I remove that last little bit, then these doors will fit in here perfect. And of course, on the inside, they'll have trim around them to weatherize them. But uh, they, they look pretty good. So uh, some of the hinges, these were bought from uh, Habitat for Humanity. I paid $35 a piece for them. Uh, but some of them are missing the hinge here or there and I'll, I'll get to it and I'll, I'll find the right hinge. So, but let's go ahead and do that last little bit, uh, remove that last little bit of wood so that I can do the final fit of the, of the, um, doors. So I, I know, and, uh, people who haven't built houses, I've heard this complaint before. They'll watch the walls go up in a day, like framing, rough framings up for a day. And they feel like the house should snap together in, in, you know, a week, but, the final fit and finish takes a third of the amount of time. So it, it's just a long time, a lot of fiddle. Every door is a fiddle, every window is a fiddle, the trim, cutting, everything of the paint, the final finish is a third again as much time as everything else. So the house will look done 
but it's not done because of final fit and finish. So that's where I'm at right here, final fit and finish on these doors. And really, it's going to be a rough fit and finish because I still have to level it and drop it on its foundation and all that. And so there'll be a one more time that I go through and, and the plain doors and make everything fit where they don't stick, to, you know, and all that. But this is good. Let me go ahead and chisel that out. And... Um, I will see how long. I might get a chainsaw. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I'll do it. So let's go ahead and get that last bit done. All right. Final trim up of that corner. Well, I, I did a rough fit of the doors and now I know I could just remove this last bit of the timber. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's try to get that done without making a huge mess. I'm ready to hang these doors. They all, the rough fit was nice. They look good. They're straight. I got all the knots out of the way. Missing a little bit of hardware. We'll make do. Well, I could brag on that uh, chainsaw cutting. That door is not that bad. Now, I have not chiseled out for the hinges to fit. So there's a little bit, and then it needs to go up to the top. Another eighth inch or a quarter inch, so I'll get some wedges down here and drive it up. But uh, that's going to be a nice fit. And then when I bring in the, uh, on the inside, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside here. That looks nice and flush. The, uh, that looks good, doesn't it? The way the uh, timber fits along the door on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course there'll be a weather stripping in here and a back plate, a strike plate. I'll get one of the old-fashioned pins that I can drop into the floor to keep it square. Uh, I want brass plates on the uh, cedar is what I want to do. Put black brass plates along the bottom. These doors are heavy. I'm going to take a little break and drink a soda and rest up. Think about it for a minute. But I think I'm ready to start carving hinge joints. I'm going to raise up the doors. Like I said, I'll find some more wedges. Raise up the door another eighth inch along the bottom for a bigger weather strip. But uh, I am really, really pleased. All right, I'm back from break. So I stared at that long enough. I drank a soda. 
had a little Snickers bar or protein bar or some kind of a candy bar. So I pulled one of the uh, hinges off that's missing some, and uh, that'll do two things. It'll let me find it <laughs> and buy the new ones, but also I'm going to uh, put each and every hinge in there in the same way, and I'm going to carve that out now so that I can hang these doors. So I'll screw it on, and then I'll carve it out. I'm going to put you on stop motion while I do that. I'm not going to do them all on stop motion. That's eight. And uh, that'll take me a little while. Let's say it takes 10 minutes per one. 80 minutes. 80 minutes. That'd be really long and boring. Hin unless you really loved hinges. Unless you really loved hinges. Then it would be okay video. But it does get to my point that the final fit and finish takes forever. <laughs> And it is the most frustrating part for people who don't build their own houses to sit there and watch and, and the, oh, the workers aren't doing anything. Well, you know, it takes all day long to put a door in. So, don't know what to say about that. When it's your own house and you're building it yourself, eh, no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and drill each one of these in so it's all pre-tapped. Like that. Make sure they're all flush, or square and <clears throat> flush. Well, I don't know. After I uh, screw it in, let's go zoom in a little bit here. Zoom in on that so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Alright, so after I mount it in there, then I go ahead and just cut around it with a razor knife to the depth that I know it needs to be. I know people have routers that do this and that would be way faster. Way faster. I don't have any such thing way out here. By the time I got done buying it and ordering it and everything, I could have put in a thousand hinges. Just like this. If I start building these on a regular basis, maybe I'll, I'll get such a thing. All right. Horses are up. It must be five o'clock. Five o'clock, boys. Ooh. I already lost one of those screws for forever. All because I'm doing this left-handed. You'll see that, uh, you know, I'm using the flat part of the chisel on the back of the, uh, of the hinge. And when I'm done, it should just go right in. We'll test it. And then if you do them that way, you know, they'll drive in and you'll get it too high, too, uh, too deep. So just turn your thing so the bevel's on the bottom to help the uh, chisel ride. And then you just ride it down. Keep going until you're done. 
I have not sharpened these chisels since I started this house. And uh, when I'm done, I'm not doing fine woodwork. So, uh, sharp the chisel, that's for fine woodwork. I kind of like the uh, ends curling up a little bit for me and not digging in super deep. Oh, if you like a sharp chisel, go ahead and sharpen it up. I'll probably wait until I'm all the way done with this house before I put a blade back on these. Maybe, I don't know. I do like those that one tool I've seen where the uh, it centers the, the screw for your hinges. And then you know, the one I just did is boogered up a little bit. Because the first screw I put in was in the center, so it pulled the hinge up. This one's okay, but the one at the top's not. And you always do a dry fit to make sure it's deep enough. You don't have anything that you want to fix up, and I do. I want this end to be a little deeper. That seems like a good door hinge to me. So there you go. Now eight more to do. I won't bother filming those. <laughs> Just takes me forever. All right. So one last thing is uh, the little furring strip between the uh, the doors, the weather strip. It's making the uh, the top. It adds an extra quarter inch there. So what I need to do is curve out. Now I could just cut it flush and then it'd be easy, but I decided to carve it out. Why not? So I'm gonna carve it out right where it goes and uh, that way the doors will sit flush and uh, we'll do that. So why do things the easy way? <laughs> you know, when something fits and you see hand carving and somebody took the time to to make that fit, you notice it, and it, it's kind of cool. So anyway, I'm gonna carve that in there, so. So while the doors were hung, I went ahead and etched where I want it, and I'm just gonna eyeball it and cut it in. Yeah, you got everybody's right. This is a uh, it's a, a stone for cutting metal. <laughs> but it'll work okay.
out where hopefully that weather strip will just close right up against that. Hang the hinges, take the pins out of the hinges and hang them one at a time and re-thread re the hinges. But uh, since I tapped it and chiseled it and got it all prepped, I'm going to try to leave the hinges on and balance the door and uh, screw them in. We'll see. <laughs> Might not be the smartest way to do it. If you would make a door out of dimensional lumber, you wouldn't have this particular problem. As I'm closing, as I'm closing, boom, I'm making contact with a knot down below. I have it done. So what I need to do is just work on this corner here. It's just a raw cut. I just got done with it just a little bit ago. But anyway, uh, chiseling it out until the top fits. And then the door looks like it'll close up real well. Real well. While I was going through my fasteners, I found I had bought little packs of black uh, hinges. Uh, I don't know if I have eight, but if I do, those stainless steel hinges are going off and these uh, old classic ball pin hinges are going on. Uh, they look like it's dimensionally the same size. Uh, when I hold up the, uh, the uh, test template, it seems to fit. So, But let's chisel that out and get that all done. It's only in the 80s right now, but you can see that I am glistening. Glistening. It's the knots in the cedar, uh, you know, that they didn't uh, come out as clean. So wherever I find them, I've got to clean them up later. And then the door will, will, will close correctly. All right, my goodness. I'll show you where it hits from the uh, where I carved out that little notch too. That relief. Look, boop. That's not half bad. I'll do just a little bit more work on that one too. For eyeballing it, the first rough in, not bad at all. Get the rest of the hinges on, and then I'll be back to you. Well, it's certainly a good day I had today. I got the door all the way in. Uh, it's it's more than rough hung, but it's not final fit finished. That little doorknob you see right there is just decorative. It's it's just to uh, give you a feeling of <laughs> right. I see. And latch here will be in case the wind blows super hard it's not designed to keep people out I've got a security door right <laughs> in the form of that cargo door <clears throat> that'll be more than enough Will be nice it'll keep it together if the wind blows hard inside the windows and pushes on these doors it ought to keep it from popping open this glass doorknob is just uh, decorative it's I, I measured it out it's too long so yeah it looks all right Sit down. Yes, it does.
out a hole a little bit. I haven't drilled out on the bottom yet either, but the wind ought to, that ought to keep there. All right, this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. I'm super happy. That's the inside view of the door. So it's a double doors, right? You could go out each side. That looks really good. It's funny when you do a good fit. Now I don't have to worry about Grand Central Station along the edge. I don't have weather stripping yet along the edge. So, uh, you know, little flat things can make it through. Let's look at the outside. Oh yeah, yeah. That looks pretty good too. So I'm glad that I cut the posts instead of the doors and didn't try to make the doors all wonky. Uh, I'm glad that I did it off the post. That looks terrific. Tomorrow, if the weather holds, I'll get the transom in, which is sitting over there next to that ancient door. And I'll get it in right there and it, it will just push out like an old window. It'll just push out. Yeah, that looks terrific. So I have to be careful what kind of hardware I get there because this I tested with and it sticks out too far and it does contact the uh, the security door when I draw the security door close. But uh, man, I am so pleased. So pleased. All right, everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Years. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.